Dolo, I do not accept you as a draw of Friday Night Smackdown. It's solo cooking. Can you smell it? It smells like shite. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Wrestling. Time to do the Smackdown, the blue brand, the Friday night quarter by quarter hours rating breakdown. And Smackdown, as always, pretty consistent. Nothing really new changing here, so... Let's just get straight into it for the June 28th, 2024. Let's go. Oh, yeah, partner. You know what time it is. Keep on rolling, 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 rolling. <laughs> Keep on rolling into quarter one, 8 o'clock to 8.15. We get the Bloodline recap. Kevin Owens, Randy Orton, Cody Rhodes, live angle promo. And then Nick Aldis gets involved. And then we get more Owens and Rhodes live shit. This started the show with 2.317 million. So... Decent start to the show, pretty strong start to the show. We go into quarter two, 8.15 to 8.30. Candice LeRae versus Jade Cargill versus Tiffany Stratton. We lose 4%. 200, 2 million, 2 million, 2.222. Four twos in a row there, 4% down. Kind of surprised it didn't lose a little bit more, to be honest. You see Candice LeRae's name there and you just expect the... The fuel ship to kind of fall it's off. It's going down, 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 and down. Uh, we're going to quarter three, 8.30 to 8.45. We've got the continuation of the triple threat match. Nia Jax post-match. Then we get Bailey, Naomi, Blair Davenport backstage. Nick Aldas is in there somewhere with the Street Profits. B-Fab and Pretty Deadly setting up a match for next week. Not much of a change here. In fact, it didn't go up a percentage, but it did gain 11 thousand views so there you go eleven thousand views tuning in between quarter two and quarter three uh quarter four 8 45 to 9 p.m we get uh solo sakoa paul Heyman backstage angle logan paul ramp promo in the beginning of night escobar and paul this went up another three percent to 2.305 million quarter five at nine o'clock to nine fifteen continuation of the triple threat match with Knight, Escobar and Paul. We get a post-match with Tyrese Halle Barton and Jalen Brunson. No idea who these guys are. Apparently they're big sports stars. Um, I know that we're not American, but I think if you're a big star, then I think the likelihood is we would have heard of you because this is not like an ignorant thing where someone could be a big star in a country and you might just not have heard of them. I would say that legit big sports stars, we would know regardless of the sport and where the sport is really popular. Would you not agree? I agree. These two guys were just looking at each other and Fox were censoring it. We didn't get that bit, but these two guys, I mean, you used to get LeBron fucking James, right, at Raw, filming Austin. What are we getting here? Although it does seem to be an American thing, like, Amer <laughs> like Americans outside of their core group of sports probably wouldn't know the top sports stars from other sports other than probably football. Yeah. No Obviously, idea, but I, think, I think most Americans are going to know who Messi and Ronaldo are, but do most Americans know who the, the top tennis player is? Do they know who the top Formula One driver is? Do they know who the, the top rugby star is? Do they know who the, the best darts player in the world is? I'm not necessarily sure, but it's like the rest of the world, I think, is a little bit more... Equipped? Yeah, the, no, I think we're more in the know when it comes to American sports. No, I would agree with that, but... Like, yeah, I'd, I'd like to... Like, they're ignorant, man. They like the night. They like when they just car go around in circles. Yeah. That's what they like. They like their simple sports. Like, I'd like to think that I know majority of the, the top stars in the NFL... But I don't know these two, so... Yeah, anyway. This went up to 2.345 million. Had the best key demo as well. 928,000. I just don't know who these guys are, but good for them. Quarter 6, 9.15, 9.30. We got uh, Sika Anoa Fidio. We got Andrade Fidio. We get Naomi versus Davenport versus Indy Hartwell. This lost 6%. Not really surprised, down to 2.11 million. So it's lost 134,000. Could have lost more, to be honest, because 
this is the definition of a job or match. Naomi Davenport, Indy Hartwell. Yeah, I remember previewing this and I, I buried it then. I buried it now. I mean, what, what is that? I mean, that's a match that belongs on NXT. Yeah, quarter seven, 9.30 to 9.45. We get the continuation of that match. And then we get a backstage promo featuring DIY, Austin Fury, and Grayson Waller. And I think to nobody's surprise here, we get another 4% loss. So this did a 2.117. And I mean, I can't say I'm surprised since quarter five. And we got that triple threat women's match. We're now down 228,000 fuels. And th that seems a bit right to me. I think that match would kind of lose you a decent amount of people watching. Yeah, I agree. Uh, we didn't have to refute. The show wouldn't be on and overall. But, I mean, in terms of the Americans, of course. Of course they'd be tuning out because of this match. This is the match here. What's happening on the sports channel? What's happening on Animal Planet? Because I guarantee you what's happening over there is better than this. A giraffe getting chased by lions or something? That's better than this shit show, is it not? I would say so. And then in quarter eight, the main event, 9.45, 10pm, we get the Solo Sokol live promo with the Bloodline live angle. And obviously this was Paul Heyman getting kicked at the Bloodline. We got a nice 9% increase here in the viewership up to 2.298 million. And that was a gain of 181,000. So, yeah, people tuning back in to see what happened in the final segment. But quarter six and quarter seven really did drag the show down. Had they that gave us better stuff in quarter six and quarter seven, the overall rating probably would have been above a 2.3. But that triple threat match did seem to take things out of the game, so... Um, I mean, I'm not surprised. Y you give shit fucking quarters and you've got to expect shit ratings. Yeah, numbers don't lie. You cannot expect when you give out some of these quarters for your overall rating to hold. Because you don't have anything particularly great apart from, like, I mean, the, the final segment was good, all right? When Paul Heyman did the whole speech and then he got barred. But see these people burying us? Oh, you guys, you guys don't know what you're talking about. Soul Score fucking sucks. He hands over to Tammy Tonga and the other guy. And they're, they're squeakier than a, a fucking flat tyre when they breaks. Well, what is going on? What is going on? I'll tell you what's going on. Fucking shite ratings for Smackdown. Cody Rhodes has butchered them. They need The Rock and they need Roman Reigns back. See, instead of filming or oh, behind the curtains, WrestleMania 40 documentaries, Dwayne... Stop filming that shitey straight to DVD movie, even though it'll make more in a second than I will in my entire life. Come back to the squared circle, brother, and give us a SummerSlam program. We need The Rock back. We need something back. This just isn't cutting it for me. I thought SmackDown sucked. Whatever. Till next time, guys. We'll see if they can uh, deliver before the Money in the Bank go home show. But yeah, I think we might see an increase next week. I think people might be tuning in to see the fallout for Paul Heyman, to see if we do get. A Roman Reigns return, but I, I don't think that's likely going to happen on the SmackDown before Money in the Bank. Back in the day, I mean, you could have got something good at any time, but knowing how WWE works now, I, I, the, 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 the go-home shows for pay-per-views, premium live events, are no longer good. They, they, they just half-ass it. Yeah. They really fucking do. I think the go-home shows are actually the worst shows now. See, every time you get a SmackDown and it's a go-home show, do you know I think it's terrible? I think so. Especially when they've got the premium live events in, like, non-American countries. Yeah, that's awesome. So see nice. when it's got, see when they've got SmackDown in Saudi or SmackDown in France or SmackDown in Glasgow? Do you know think they just purposely give you a garbage... It's like a pre-show to the premium live event the next day. Yeah, and that's what it's like. I don't understand. And that's what this week's SmackDown will probably be like. Because yeah. I believe it's happening in Canada. And it'll, it'll probably just be... A couple of matches that weren't good enough to be on the, the, the Money in the Bank premium live event, so we'll give you them on SmackDown. And you won't get nothing interesting. Oh, well, they don't want anyone to get hurt before the big... I hate that logic. Oh, the SmackDown before Mania? Well, of course it's going to suck because they don't want any. They don't want to risk any injury. What the fuck is this? Smack, SmackDown and Raw before WrestleMania back in the day used to be some of the best shows. That was your last chance to get people interested. Maybe if they wrestled safe, they wouldn't get any injuries. Well, there you go. Anyway, guys, that's it. Catch you in the next one. Until then, peace.